I'm disappointed that we are um, in another lockdown in the UK, but <laughs> I am absolutely delighted to be back bringing you English Live Series 2. 
and um, a whole new collection of uh, really exciting and vibrant and short uh, English lessons to help you through your homeschooling week. Now, you may already be aware of this, um, but if not, my lessons are now only running Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, partly because I'm now <laughs> quite exhausted and um, also because I'm running classes in the evenings and the weekends um, and I've got a really full schedule to manage. And another small difference we have is that um, there aren't going to be any task sheets on the Holly's English Hub Facebook group for you to download and work on. However, there will be a challenge at the end of each lesson and that's something that you can work on afterwards just to consolidate what it is we've learned in the lesson. And for a lot of topics, you probably will be able to find relevant tasks and relevant task sheets from English Live. And um, I'm launching a new website in the next few days and they'll all be on there. So you can quite easily uh, navigate through that and find workshop sheets that you're, um, sorry, English Live sheets, task sheets that you're looking for. So what else is there to So, right, uh, here we go. Lots of shout outs. I must give a huge, huge, huge thank you to uh, Mummy English. Hello, Mum, uh, who's back helping me out uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday with all of the shout outs going on in the live chat. So <laughs> hi to Amy, Ben, Ethan and Jenna in Scotland. Huge hello to all of you. Hello to um, Harry Whiteman, who's 12. Hi. Hello to Grace. Um, hello to Archie in Watford. Oh, you're not too far from me. And uh, he says, hi to Holly and Mummy English. Well, that's just great that you're all recognising that Mummy English is very much part of the team. Um, hello to Noah, who is 10. Hello to Sam, who is 11, who's a big fan of the videos. Great, Sam. Well, I expect you're going to be uh, fabulous at English by the time you head back to school. Hello to Heidi, who is 11 in Kettering. Io, who is eight, who'll be nine on the 22nd of January. Io, your birthday's really soon. And uh, hello to Poppy, who's back learning today. It is nice to hear lots of the, the usual names from the last series. Hello to Victoria and her son, who are joining in for the first time today. This, that's awesome. We've got new people joining in our lessons as well. Hello to you. And hello to Scarlett, who is 10, who is doing nearly all of my courses and classes. I know which Scarlett that is. Hello, Scarlett. Nice to see that you're tuning in. Hello to Thomas. It's his first lesson today. Awesome. I hope that you enjoy it. OK, it's going to be a good one. Neris is 11. Hello to Neris. Ella Wright. Uh, she's 11. and She says hello. And I'll get to the rest of the shout outs when we have a little uh, break. Otherwise, I could be here all day. So today we are talking about commas. And I've called this lesson Cosmic Commas because I've just used um, stars and space as the topic of my example sentences. Uh, so we're going to be looking at commas how to use them. We're going to have a little practice around some of the rules um, of how to use commas and hopefully you'll be able to tackle the challenge on the end of this 25-30 minute lesson uh, straight afterwards. Or you can always come back to the challenge later in the day or tomorrow and this video will be on YouTube and you can come back to it and um, double check any of the comma rules that you need to. So I guess we better get started. I've got a little warm up challenge for you all today. You're going to have to bear with me with my um, board because I'm in a slightly different position in my lounge and I've had to rearrange um, how I deliver this. So here's hoping it doesn't fall over. I'm still so te technologically advanced, aren't I? Absolutely. Uh, can you place the commas in these three sentences? Uh, three different ways of using a comma. Uh, let's see how you get on. Good luck. Play. Thank you. 
one to Lil's World. You've used commas in this one correctly. Hello, Olivia, Ray and Isabel. Welcome. Oh, hello. Maddie and Eloise are joining in. They come to all of the courses and workshops. It's lovely to have you back again, girls. You can't wait for their aspiration. You can't wait for their food. You can't wait for their Let's see how you got on. Pause. Okay, so um, I'm going to give you the answers now, and then we're going to talk through some of the rules. Hopefully, you can still see this. Turn it over. Okay. Uh, so, so um, if you are watching this on catch up, you can pause at any time if you need a little bit extra time to do the tasks or if you want to rewind it, because you want to hear me uh, explain a rule once again, that's absolutely fine on catch up. And if you are watching live, then you can just come back to this afterwards. So here we go. In the first one, commas are used in a list. Okay, so we use commas to separate, separate out different things in a list. And in this one, it's the stars, comma, the moon, comma, oh, lovely, pen stopped working. Let's hope that's the only, <laughs> the only little problem we have today. No boards falling over or anything. The moon, the planets, and the galaxies. You can put one here, and I will talk about that a little bit later in the lesson. Uh, in this one here, it's to separate out uh, two clauses. So you separate your um, main or uh, independent clause from your subordinate or dependent clause. So um, I will do a lesson on clauses in a couple of weeks time. Um, I think I've done a lesson already as well, covering that in some areas. So uh, you can always look through my YouTube channel for that specifically if you need it. But a um, dependent clause or a subordinate clause is part of a sentence that doesn't make any sense by itself. So it needs another part of the sentence, the main clause, to um, give you the information you need to fully understand that dependent part. So that in this one is here, because the stars sparkled in the night sky. That's a, um, a main clause that makes sense all by itself. And the second part here, but she was oblivious to them, doesn't really make sense by itself. OK. You got that one? And then finally, Fred claimed, I always wanted to be an astronaut. Uh, well, this one, as you probably know, you would use a comma to separate a speech verb. So in this case, it's claimed and uh, the speech and the speech mark. So it goes between the speech verb and the speech mark. So we'd have a comma here. Um, the same rule applies if you have the speech verb after the, the, the speech. And if you are viewing from America or somewhere in the world where you're using American English, I think you put the comma within the, the speech before the speech mark at the end or at the start. But in British English, that's where you place the speech mark. So I'm going to give you one minute to come up with your own example for, let's see, maybe you can come up with a sentence of your own to do with stars or any topic you like uh, for each of these three different rules or maybe you just want to pick one and focus on that, whatever works for you. And remember, you can write them down, shout them out at the screen, or pop them into the live chat, whatever works for you. Okay, good luck. Play. But I can't stop Listen, listen to me, hear me. You can't stop chasing your dream just because somebody in your life will believe in you. You can't stop believing in yourself just because somebody in your life will believe in you. You can't stop chasing the dreams of your life just because when you know you can do it, you're going to have to do it all by yourself.
good use of commas in a list. Lovely one from the How people. So I'm imagining that's Tom. Hello, Tom. My favourite animals are falcon, rhino, snow leopard, and a lemur. Very good use of commas in that sentence, separating out the list of animals. Fabulous work, everybody. Pause. Okay, so we're going to look at these rules again and look at two more sample sentences and um, see if we can work out where the commas go in them. So here we have uh, two sentences. I'm going to ask you to try and work them out for yourself in a moment. Uh, my favourite planets are Mars, Jupiter, Venus and Mercury. What rule would you use for that one? And this one, I packed my spacesuit, dried fruit, family photograph, and lucky stone. We're going to talk a bit more about this one in just a moment, but let's see if you can work out where the commas go. Maybe you can jot these sentences down and put the commas in or call them out at the screen um, or pop them in the live chat. I'm going to pop the music on again. Lots of popping going on today. Hopefully you're not a pop here. Right, off we go. Play. <laughs> Um, I feel like I should do some shout outs very quickly because um, Mummy English, her fingers must be on fire today. She's sending over all of your names and your lovely comments. So uh, let's let's break through some of these. So, um, oh, thanks, Mum. She doesn't look huge. Well, she'd be right. I'd, I do look huge now. <laughs> uh, hello to Zen, who is 10. What a great name. Hi, Zen. Hello to Bella. Hello to Nanny from Byron. So Byron and your Nanny, you're both watching together. That's great. And uh, hello to Shreya in Coventry. Nice to have you back. Hello to Dora Carter, who is nine from Cornwall. Hello to you. Hello to Sophia in um, Rygate. Hello to Lily, who is 10 in Bishop Stortford. Hello to Felicity. She says hi. Hi to you, Felicity. Hello to Ella, who is 11. Um, big hello to Layla, who I know always tunes in. Hello to Freddie from South Moor. Hi to uh, Rebby and Remy and um, Drashika and Jayan in Manchester. Nice to have you back, Drashika. Hello to Austin and Sylvia. Hello to Seth in Chester Chesterfield. It's his first time. I hope you're enjoying it, Seth. I hope you learn something today or at least have some practice of your common usage. And um, I'll do some more shout outs after we've gone through uh, the next couple of activities. So, where do the commas go in these sentences? Well, I think lots of you have got this now. So, in the first one, it's being commas are being used as a list or should be used as a list. So, we would put them here, here, possibly here. Does anyone know what that comma is called if we pop it there between the second to last thing in the list and the word and? It's called an Oxford comma. And then in this one, I packed my spacesuit, comma, dried fruit, comma, 
family photograph, possibly a comma, and lucky stone. Okay, so that comma that can come before and is an Oxford comma. Now, using an Oxford comma properly is quite a skill because what it does is it shows the person who's reading your writing that the last two things are not combined. Okay, and I've got an example for you. So we're going to look particularly, let me move this back a tiny bit so I don't get my head chopped off. Um, we're looking particularly here at Family Photograph and Lucky Stone. So at the moment, there aren't any commas there. There aren't any Oxford commas. So how do we know what, what the meaning of the sentence is? Does it mean my family's photograph and, and Lucky Stone? So the lucky stone that belongs to the family, the photograph that belongs to or is of the family, or my family photograph, one thing, and my lucky stone, a separate thing, okay? So using an Oxford comma here would indicate that they are two separate things, whereas this can be a little bit um, ambiguous. We're not entirely sure, um, does it? I should say, if, does it mean that it's a photograph and a stone belonging to the family? Okay, so this is really tough now. I'd like you to try and come up with an example of using an Oxford comma properly, okay, where you risk your reader misunderstanding whether the last two things are separate things or a combined thing. If you find it really difficult to do, try and think about listing flavors because flavors are quite easy to uh, combine. So it might, um, that might be easier for you. Have a go, one minute. I'll look at your answers in the chat. Play. <laughs> I like to know a Gabriel from Wales first lesson. Welcome. Listen, listen to me, hear me. You can't stop chasing your dream just because somebody in your life will believe in you. You can't stop believing in yourself just because somebody in your life will believe in you. You can't stop chasing the dreams of your life just because when you know you can do it, you're gonna have to do it all by yourself. Hello Connie, your first lesson too, hope you're enjoying it. Ah, Daisy, lovely example, I like salt, vinegar and ketchup. Yeah, good, good use of commas. It would be good to separate salt and vinegar if they were two separate things, as in the last two on the list. Right, lovely to see uh, fantastic examples in the live chat. Hopefully you've got some good examples at home. And remember any work that you do during the lesson today, if you get your adult to take a photograph of it and post it on the Holly's English Hub Facebook group, it doesn't need to have your name on it. It certainly doesn't need to have your surname on it. Um, and we can all give you some feedback and uh, see the lovely work that you've been doing today. So like we did in the first lockdown, please do share your work. If you were in the classroom, you'd be looking at each other's work. Um, so it really is a valuable element of these lessons to have that place where we can share the work that, that we're doing at home. We are a global classroom after all. There's about 350 of you watching at this precise minute and there'll be lots more tuning in to watch it not so live later in the day. So the next challenge, I've got three more sentences for you. OK, um, I like learning about space, so I read lots of astronomy books. The moon smiled at me, yet I hardly noticed. And once upon a time, an astronaut came to stay. So if you hadn't already worked out, 
these sentences need a comma to separate out the main clause and the subordinate clause, or sometimes known as the independent clause and the dependent clause. So there's part of those sentences that don't really make sense by themselves, and there's part of those sentences that can stand alone, that work perfectly as they are. So can you work out where the commas go? I'm sure you can. I'm gonna give you just a minute or so to have a go. And if you'd like to put your answers in the chat, then I'll read out the ones that have got it right. Okay, good luck. Play. <laughs> these answers up on the board so you can check off your own work. So in the first one, I like learning about space. Perfect sentence by itself. So I read lots of astronomy books, needs a bit more information. So the comma separates those two clauses. Let's turn that around a bit so you can see it. And the second one, the moon smiled at me, yet I hardly noticed. So the moon smiled at me, standalone sentence. The rest of it doesn't make sense by itself. So we separate it with a comma there. And finally, now this one, <laughs> fronted adverbials. Yeah, uh, they're almost always, and pretty much as a rule, particularly if you're key stage two, pretty much always as a rule, you're gonna put a comma after your fronted, uh, fronted adverbial which is a short uh, uh, part at the start of your sentence that gives some information about the um, time or manner or you know the, the information that follows. I do have a lesson on YouTube about fronted adverbials though, so don't panic. And if it's something that you haven't looked at before, don't worry about it at all. Uh, once upon a time, doesn't make sense by itself, comma, so this is a bit different because the bit that doesn't make sense by itself is at the beginning rather than at the end. An astronaut came to stay. Okay. If you got all three correct, give yourself a pat on the back. If you've got two correct, give yourself a pat on the back. If you've got one correct, give yourself a pat on the back. If you didn't get any correct, that's absolutely fine because you can practice them and then you can give yourself loads of pats on the back when you've got them all correct. So <coughs> I think it's time for a few more shout outs before we move on to our last task. So, gosh, poor Mummy English. She her, there's going to be nothing left of her fingers after today, all these messages. Uh, hello to Amber, who is 11 in Northampton. Hello to Zach, who is nine, and Henry, who is seven. It's their first time watching. Hi, I'm loving that there's so many people joining for the first time. So exciting. Hello to Christina from Enniskellen, who is nine. Hello to Mayan and Asia. Hello to you two. Hello to uh, Charis, who is 11 in Bradford. Hello to Christy, who is in Cork in Ireland. Lovely, really nice to have you, Christy. Hello to Kai in Nebworth. Millie, who is eight, she's new as well. All these new learners. Hello to Orla, who is 10. Hello to Oscar, who is nine, it's his first session. Hello to Emily, who's 10 in Chislehurst. 
Uh, Cecilia says you uh, look nice. Thank you very much, Celia. That's very kind of you. Hello to Grogu and Juno. Hello to Charlie in Abington. And hello to Frankie. Frankie, hi. And please mention Archie and Watford's water fleas. Are those your pets? Lovely. Hello to your, your water fleas in Watford, Archie. And uh, quickly, hello to Liam, who is eight, Summer, who is six, and they're in Harlow. And hello to Nicola and Eliza, who is six, in Arsley. Not too far from here either. Right. On to our final task before we wrap up our lesson. How are we doing for time? Slightly over today, to be expected. I'm going to be very chatty because I'm so excited to be back with you all. Here we go. Three sentences. They might need commas, they might not. So I want you to think here very carefully about what I said about a comma separating a main clause and a dependent clause. Okay, so a main clause makes sense by itself. You only use a comma to separate out two clauses if one of them depends on the main clause. I once visited Mars. It was utterly delightful. His equipment was a feat of engineering. He felt at the top of his game. I love space. It's the best. If you can't use a comma because you don't have a dependent clause, you use something else called a semicolon. I'm going to draw one on for you, although I'm sure you're familiar with a semicolon. It looks like this. And you would use that to separate out two main clauses, two, two parts of your sentence that make um, perfect sense by themselves. And it's when you can't technically use a comma, but the two things are so closely related that you don't want to separate them out into two separate sentences. You want to somehow keep them together. And that's where the fabulous semicolon comes into play. So one minute. Quickly have a go, see if you can work out where the semicolon goes in each of these three sentences. And I look forward to seeing your ideas in the chat. Good luck. Play. Some of you are using commas, where you should probably be using a semicolon. Well done, Lily. You can't wait for their aspiration. You can't wait for their approval. Ellie says fronted adverbials are really hard. I think I might have to do another fronted adverbial lesson. Listen, listen to me, hear me. You can't stop chasing your dreams. Don't let somebody in your life chasing dreams. Well done, Natalie. Well done, Kim. You're getting this one correct. Hello, Will Gibbons. Big shout out to you. Well done, honey. Honey says there's a semicolon in this one. There certainly is, but where does it go? Well done, Scarlett. Ah, lots of you asking to see Bertie. I'm not sure I can lift him up anymore. <laughs> Pause. Right, okay, I'm going to give you the answers now, but uh, if you're watching this on Catch Up and you need more time, you can just press the pause button, that's absolutely fine, and when you're ready then you can listen to me give the answers, okay? So we are separating out two um, main clauses, okay? Um, there's, the two parts are so closely related, we don't want to use separate sentences. We can't use a comma because one of those clauses isn't a dependent um, or a subordinate um, clause. So we're going to use a semicolon here. Here. And here. Well done if you got all three correct. Ooh, 
can stop that from falling over. We don't need that today on the first lesson back. <laughs> um, well done if you got all of those correct. And if you didn't, remember, like I always say, it's just an opportunity to practice and get better and get it right next time. You can do these videos over and over until you've nailed it. So um, I did say I would finish every lesson with a, a challenge. Today's challenge is here. Uh, you can jot it down now, but remember, of course, uh, this video stays on YouTube. So if you want to go away and have a little bit of lunch or a cup of tea, um, you can always just come back to the video and just pause on this screen at the end. So today's challenge, pick a topic that you're interested in. I picked space when I did it. Um, I'm going to move this back just for a moment so I can see it. Here we go. Um, and write a paragraph that includes sentences that use commas in lists, use commas to separate to separate main and dependent clauses, uh, use an Oxford comma properly. So remember I said it's those last two things in the list. If there's any chance that they could be combined somehow, then that's when the Oxford comma is perfect. And use a semicolon, okay? So two parts of a sentence, so closely related, you don't want to have two separate sentences, but you can't really use a comma because they are both main or independent clauses. So that's the challenge. I want to see a really nice paragraph that really showcases all of the ways that you can use commas, uh, showcases what you've learned today. And um, again, you can post that on the Holly's English Hub Facebook group. And um, I look forward to seeing all of your work pop up on there later today. So I'm going to bring this closer for a moment so that you can, if you need to, pause it so you can jot it down what you need to do. Play. Hopefully you've got it. Okay. So <laughs> we are at the end of the very first lesson of English Live Series 2. I am absolutely delighted so many of you were able to join me and I hope that you found the lesson useful. Tomorrow... Um, I'm going to be doing a live storytelling of Moby Dick with some uh, questions throughout and uh, of course there'll be a challenge on the end of the lesson suited to all of the different age ranges and on Friday of course I have the weekly spellathon, key stages one to four, the spellings list are on English with Holly Facebook page. Um, have a lovely afternoon, enjoy your homeschooling, enjoy your learning, whatever subject you're doing and myself and Bertie who's fast asleep on the sofa um, he's too heavy for me to lift. Um, I'll try and get him in later in the week. From the both of us, have a lovely, lovely day and I'll see you tomorrow.